Hello YouTubers, fellow hams. Well, I shot a bunch of stuff over the last couple of weeks and I wasn't sure how to work any individual subject into a single video, so I thought I'd just combine things and talk about uh, what I did for field day, first off. And then uh, uh, July 4th, fireworks night, was also a night where 20 meters was open globally well into the evening. And I want to talk about that and share an interesting experience I had. First off, field day. Um, for nine months of the year, I'm pretty much always doing field day. So I don't usually get too excited about field day. Uh, I'm living in the RV. I'm off grid most of the time. Uh, so I'm always doing field day. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the official field day, uh, I decided to uh, go QRPP and uh, just try to fill a log page with contacts using the CW Flea. The little uh, three to four hundred milliwatt uh, transmitter that uh, I worked with uh, Zach Tech and uh, uh, helped him develop. So this was my setup for field day. Um, I used the Malahit receiver as my receiver. The CW Flea as my transmitter, and uh, of course I had a cup of a mug of uh, coffee and an old-fashioned uh, paper log. And an old telegraph key that uh, I picked up at a ham fest years and years ago. I love that key. The feel of it is great. It's just got a precise, solid, you know, highly engineered feel to it. So anyhow, um, Saturday uh, morning, uh, the first day of field day, uh, once the contest had started, I started out on 20 meters. And uh, the very first contact I made, I didn't have the camera set up yet because I was just testing things out and getting things ready to go. Uh, and I heard NV9L calling CQ Field Day. Now that's Valerie. And you might recognize her call or name from uh, Bob Hiles' Ham Nation TV show over on Twitch TV. She does the contesting segments. And she's over by Chicago. So I, I gave her a call. She heard me. She came back and asked for my uh, call again. She didn't quite get it. And on the third send, she got it, and she sent me her information, and I sent her my information, which she confirmed. Uh, so my first contact for field day was Valerie over there by Chicago, um, over 1,400 miles away, with just over 300 milliwatts out of the CW Flea. So off to a good start. So I uh, fiddled around and uh, made a few more contacts on 20 meters. Um, here's some clips. There's another one for the log. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, after uh, making about four contacts, um, and by the way, I answered uh, seven CQs and I uh, had four successful contacts, so I was doing pretty good. Valerie was still the longest distance one, the others were closer in, but uh, anyway, um, my host uh, here where I'm staying, Tony, uh, he and I uh, decided to drive down and check out the local club's field day setups. And uh, they had some nice setups, you know. They, uh, uh, one club was set up at, at one of the parks. Um, they only had about two or three radios, a couple of trailers, and a farmer's market going on in the same park. Um, uh, but we sat and we chatted with them for a little bit. And then uh, we went over to the Halapai Club's site over by the Harley dealership. And they had a very clever setup uh, for an antenna tower. They were using a cherry picker to suspend a beam and a couple of other antennas up there. And they had some trailers set up, uh, air conditioning. And we chatted with them for a while, and then we uh, we made our way back here. Now, I didn't shoot any media at the at the club visits. It was more or less just dropping in to say hi to them and all that and, and uh, chat a little bit. Um, I Two years ago, I went to their field day setups and did a full... Uh, uh, well, did several conversations and interviews. That video is, is back a couple of years on the channel. I'll put a link to it down in the description below if you're at all interested in the uh, Kingman, Arizona Amateur Radio Clubs. Um, we just talked to a few of the members there, so it was, uh, it was a nice little uh, interview. Uh, but anyway, um, we came back, and uh, my plan was to um, wait until the evening and get on 40 meters uh, with the flea and make some more field day contacts. And the sky was clear at sunset and around nine or so I was thinking about getting ready to get on the air and I heard thunder. Now we're in monsoon season here in Arizona uh, which generally brings very brief and fast powerful uh, thunderstorms and microbursts. I mean it can be some really serious storms. I took a, this photo of one of them passing Usually they go by off in the distance and we just watch them go by, but every now and then one hits us directly. And Saturday night was one of those nights. Uh, I uh, was sitting in here and I was hearing a lot of thunder and I was seeing the flashes out of the window. So I went outside and disconnected the antenna and then looked up at the sky. And in the flashes of lightning off to the west, I could see a black wall approaching and then I heard the roar what was happening was a storm was developing just west of here and growing and moving to the east uh, and it was obvious to me when I looked up at the sky that we were about to get hit really hard and I made a split-second decision I was thinking about jumping back in the RV and grabbing some stuff but uh, I heard the roar of the approaching wind, and I knew I had seconds before it hit. So I ducked into the big metal barn. I'm parked next to uh, Tony's uh, metal barn, which is rated to handle winds in excess of 100 miles an hour. So I jumped in there. Uh, there was so much lightning that I thought I'd better be inside a metal building. And uh, that's where I sat for more than 25 minutes through one heck of a storm. Um, I didn't ha shoot any media because I didn't have any, any camera with me. <laughs> I made that split-second decision to duck in the barn. So I didn't have my cell phone. I didn't have a radio. I was completely unprepared. Uh, but uh, what could I do? You know, it, I had no time. It hit, and it hit hard. The sound in there was deafening, the roaring wind. And when they say, uh, when you hear s people talk about storms they've been through and they talk about the sound of a freight train, that's, that's pretty accurate. I mean, it was a deep, throaty roar from the wind. Rain being driven against the barn was just incredibly loud. It hailed. Um, at one point, the wind was so heavy uh, that the whole front of the building, it's a, you know, it's a stainless, or it's a steel building, corrugated steel, and the whole front of the building went, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I thought, I seriously thought for a moment about climbing under, into the, uh, the uh, workbench. He's got a um, angle iron workbench in there that's basically a, an angle iron cage with a shelf in the middle. And I thought about climbing into that shelf so I'd have a cage around me in case the building came apart. I mean, it was, it was a huge storm, absolutely huge. And as I say, it went on for 25 minutes. Um, when it finally tailed off, 
uh, and, and just dropped off to light rain. I went to go outside and I kind of expected to find the RV in ruins. It was that strong. But there she stood. Uh, she's pointed nose to the west, so she was nose into the uh, heavy wind, which is what you want. I mean, I drive this thing 60 miles an hour down the road, so it can handle 60 mile an hour winds indefinitely, right? So it was fine. Um, I came inside and there were no leaks and everything was okay. Uh, but there was another storm coming through. So, you know, it was, it was one of those nights where we had just one storm after another and the rest of them were small. It was just rain and a little bit of lightning, but I stayed off the air. Um, so I didn't do anything Saturday night. Sunday morning, um, I hooked the antenna back up and I got on 40 meters and I made a few more contacts. I've been playing around with the AGC settings on the Malahit and uh, trying to get it to behave itself. I'm not getting as much of the distorted audio, which by the way, although it sounds like it's the speaker, is not the speaker because I'm using the USB connection over to the computer and the digital audio being sent over USB has the same distortion that I hear in the speaker with really strong signals. So the distortion's happening in the audio processing, not the speaker. Yeah, somebody way too fast. That, that distortion, that's not the speaker. Looking over at the waterfall on, I'm running FL Digi as a wingman over here, helping me to copy the faster code, and I'm seeing that same distortion. But you can eliminate it by dropping the volume. So it's, it's the audio processing, not the speaker. A6 CV. Yep. Okay, AA6CV, 1643. Now, um, I wanted to fill a log page initially, uh, but I'm having trouble with my right arm. Um, my spine's degrading badly. I haven't talked too much about my health issues, but nerves are getting pinched off and I'm slowly having trouble with uh, different muscle groups. And my right arm, I can't lift it in certain directions now without a lot of pain in the shoulder. And uh, just operating the key was, was causing me little stabs, little knife pricks of pain deep in my shoulder. Uh, so I, I managed another 40 or another four contacts on 40 meters. And uh, I'd had enough at that point. My, it was just getting too painful. But I, you know, it worked. I, I proved that the, the CW flea uh, and QRPP was, uh, was usable for field day contacts. I mean, it's like shooting fish in the barrel. There are so many stations on the air that it's pretty easy to make contacts. Um, but that was, uh, that was my field day. Now, uh, fast forward to July 4th. 
Um, that's the Independence Day uh, holiday here in the U.S. where we celebrate our Decl Declaration of Independence from England. Um, I'm not going to go into that. But anyway, uh, we decided to sit out on the porch of the house where we overlook the valley where Kingman is. And you can see the city down there and uh, watch fireworks going off. And I decided to play a little radio. So I took up the uh, 705 and the Chameleon Loop and I set those up here, as you can see, um, at the edge of the porch. And I fiddled around on the radio for a while while we were, met, while we were waiting for the fireworks to start. Didn't make any contacts. Um, tried a few CW contacts, but I you know, wasn't really trying too hard. I really just wanted to see how quickly I could set up the 705 and the Chameleon Loop. Because Tony and I are thinking about going up on the Halapine Mountains and playing radio uh, one of these days. And that would be my portable setup. But after the fireworks, um, or during the fireworks, I don't remember, but uh, I was noticing on 20 meters that I was hearing a lot of DX stations. Thank you, that's 73, Ken, and we're very, very pleased to meet you. And 7 kilo Mexico, R5AJ, don't you say? R5AJ in Moscow. And I'm picking him up on the Chameleon Loop in Arizona. Come on, call again. Thank you, Tony. Please, this is Romeo Five American Soviet calling. Thank you. Over. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. Romeo Five Alpha Japan. Romeo Five Alpha Japan is calling. Thank you. And stand by. Over. Kilo Bravo Niner Romeo Lima Whiskey. Victor. Ah, he's in Moscow. What? Seriously. So yeah, um, I was here in Italy, Germany, Russia, um, Asian stations, Japan, and uh, some Australian stations on the Chameleon Loop up there at the porch. So when I got back into the RV, I hooked the radio back up to my end-fed half-wave, and uh, I went and checked into a net in, over in Australia. Um, it's a net, I'll put the information up here. It's a net that's similar to OMIS, uh, which is a, um, uh, it's a net where you check into it and you listen to the other check-ins and each one's assigned a number and they move down the list. And each person on the list then has the option to call one of the other stations that have checked into the net. Now here in the States, it's a, it's a nice net if you're working on your uh, Worked All States Award to get those uh, rare states, you know, you hope that one of them checks in and you can give them a call. And sometimes DX stations check in and uh, then they get called by the other stations in the net. Well, I tried to check into this Australian net with 10 watts out of the 705 and they picked me right up uh, over, I think it's over 8,000 miles <laughs> down to Australia from here. Uh, and they picked me right up. And so I was checked into this net and in a twist, I was the DX station. So they had me on the DX station list and I had a few stations calling me because they wanted the DX. So that was an interesting experience being on the other side of the mirror, so to speak, you know. Uh, so anyway, um, here's, a, here's a couple of clips uh, with the Australian net. It's worth mentioning. It is 10:21 p.m. We had a little burp from the uh, sunspot that's facing us. The flux, when you look at the flux graph, kind of had a bump in it. And 20 meters is wide open. I've heard Italy, Russia, Germany. He's in Fiji. Okay, there was a check-in. Who was that? Okay, and there was another. Who was the other? Oh, ZL2. Okay, ZL is uh, New Zealand. Oh, I see. I'm used on. Excuse me. 
Okay, VK3 RH, Radio Hotel. Do I have that right? This is KB9RLW. Over. QSL, QSL on the VK3 Radio Hotel. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I had your call down right. Um, I do want to make a call, if that's okay. Uh, I heard another station quite well. Uh, Victor Kilo 4, Oscar Bravo. Victor, Victor Kilo 4, Oscar Bravo. This is Kilo Bravo Niner, Romeo Lima Whiskey. Uh, over. Do you copy? Bravo, Oscar Bravo, over. Oh, thank you, thank you for the correction. Yes, VK4, Bravo, Oscar, Oscar, Bravo, <laughs> Kilo, Bravo, 9, Romeo, Lima, Whiskey. Do you copy? Over. Okay, I copy. There was nothing heard, uh, so thanks for giving me the chance. Um, that's the only one I wanted to try, so uh, back to you. Victor Kilo 3, uh, uh, Radio Hotel. Kilo Bravo 9, Romeo Lima Whiskey. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, unfortunately, the call was no contact. Uh, most disappointing. Uh, please stand by and go ahead, George. Okay, uh, next one, VK7XX in four. Thank you, and really Lima 1 and Mike Hotel Sierra has checked out. Victor Kilo 7, X-Ray, X-Ray. This is Kilo Bravo Niner, Romeo Lima Whiskey. I do copy. You are about a 5-5, five, five, a 5-5 five, five in Arizona. Over. Kilo 4, 5-5 QSL to Tasmania Island. Thank you very much. I'm having fun tonight. Back to net. So yeah, that was fun. Um, I was on the uh, on the radio till almost midnight, and 20 meters was open, wide open. Uh, not only could I hear all the stations on the net, the Australian and New Zealand stations. But I could also hear the European stations that had checked in and that they were bringing in from, uh, from uh, Italy, from Germany, from Wales. Um, and uh, at one point I heard an Italian station call a South African station. And I heard their cue, so I heard both sides. I could hear both stations. 20 meters was open globally that night. Uh, that's something that happens as the solar cycle really gets going, and it's really cool. 20 meters is a really good band for late at night when the solar cycle is is active you know and we've got a good uh, solar flux number especially if the solar flux is up and the solar wind is down um, i grabbed a clip of the space weather page and part of the graphs there and you can see this burp in the uh, solar flux this happened just about sunset on uh saturday night yeah, or no, on the fourth, the, the fourth, the night of the fourth. I think that was a Monday, um, and the solar wind was down. So when you have a, a f activity on flux and solar wind down, twenty meters stays open late, and it was open well into the evening globally, and that's a magic time. Uh, it, propagation is tremendous when that happens. So if you see the solar flux go up and the solar wind is down that evening might be a good evening to get on 20 meters and work some dx and it's like it's easy uh, i had a blast that night I, I talked to several australians and new zealander um i talked to a couple of europeans you know i heard that guy in in uh, mosque i think he's in moscow r r5 aj or uh, i forget I, I i might have mentioned it in the video clip what his call was but uh he was booming in so that's, uh, that's something to watch. Um, also, uh, I have a new favorite map that I check for propagation that shows the uh, projected maximum usable frequency, as you can see here, as a heat map. 
and uh, the areas that are highlighted have numbers that show the maximum usable frequency projected to be propagating within that area. This is a great map to take a look at if you're curious about what the band is doing, bands are doing in your area. And I'll put a link to that in the video description as well. Um, I, bookmark it. That's a good one to, t to just take a glance at if you want to know what propagation is like in your area at uh, that particular time. It's updated every 15 minutes. So you can go back and, and see the propagation shifting and changing throughout the day. And I have found it to be pretty accurate. If it says propagation between me and the East Coast is, uh, is up, up to about 16 megahertz, I can get on 20 meters and I can probably talk to somebody out towards the East Coast. It, it, it seems to be fairly accurate. So that's, that's a good resource for you. So that's kind of a, a summary of the things that have happened over the past uh, couple of weeks. Um, or the past week and a half? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's what's been going on. Uh, what's coming up? Well, as I mentioned, Tony and I are thinking about uh, taking the radios up on the Halapai Mountains. We uh, scoped out an area up there that uh, has a nice overview off to the uh, west. Um, it might be fun to play HF, so we're, we're kind of thinking about that, and I'll, of course, film that if we do. Um... I have another goofy little antenna that I picked off have, off of Amazon for uh, two meters that uh, I, I might do a review of. It's actually a useful one. I, I Unlike that little weird little loop antenna, which is more of a novelty, this is actually functional. Although I think the naming is overstated. If you're going to use the word tactical in your product name, it probably should apply to a military product because that's what tactical, well, that's where the word applies. <laughs> But anyway, we'll probably look at that. Um, and uh, it's uh, coming up on the middle of July. I'm about to purchase my train ticket for my ride back east to visit my family and friends. And then I have to start getting ready for that. And I'm going to have to do quite a bit uh, to get the RV ready to sit for two to three weeks unoccupied here in the heat. Because we are in the hot season here. Um, temperatures are getting up to 103, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, about 40 degrees Celsius during the day with full-on sun. So, uh, and we have rainstorms that come through, so I can't leave the windows open. I'm going to have to leave the roof vents open and hope that there's enough air exchange that it doesn't get too hot in here. But I suspect it's probably going to get upwards of 120 to 125 Fahrenheit in here uh, during the three weeks that I'm gone midday. So I need to prep the RV, get all the lithium batteries out of here, empty out the fridge, take all the canned foods out, and then uh, basically disconnect and shut the RV down uh, completely for the uh, three weeks that I won't be here. And uh, yeah, so I got a lot of work to do to get ready for the trip. Plus I got to pack, I got to figure everything out there make arrangements for transportation once I get east and uh, this is a little there's a lot to do so I'll, I'll try to squeeze a video in between now and when I leave um, and I will probably do some documentary work on the train ride videoing things talking about uh, the train ride itself I imagine I'll spend a fair amount of time in the observation car so I might do some time-lapse video with the GoPro uh, I don't know that I'm going to take a radio back east. I don't think I'll have time to play radio when I'm there. Um, I have so many people to visit in Fort Wayne. My short list is 25 people that I want to want to visit while I'm there. Old co-workers and my friends and my son. Um, and then uh, I'll be zipping across to Michigan to my uh, visit my mother and my sister and her family. And then uh, leaving from there back on the Amtrak to get back out here towards the end of August. So I'll slip something in there somehow. I'm going to take my spare computer with me and, and uh, camera. Uh, the GoPro probably and my cell phone will be the cameras that I'll use uh, for filming. I'm not going to take the big camera with me. I've got to be careful about what I bring with me, you know. Uh, I, I, I would hate for somebody to steal my bag while I'm asleep and, and lose the really good gear so there's that anyway that's what's been going on and that's what's coming up and uh you're all up to date so we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up also if you're not already a subscriber click to subscribe join us on the facebook channel for discussion about the videos and if you'd like to help support this channel please click to support me on my patreon page